Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and in this video I'll be talking about the Washington Commanders signing former Giants offensive lineman Nick Gates and signing Danny Johnson to a two-year deal. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content. Also hit that like button and that notification bell. There's going to be a lot of videos and breaking news during free agency, so you're going to want to have that notification bell on. So let's get right into it. So I wanted to wait a little bit before I made this video until the contract details came out for Nick Gates. So they have come out, so I'll do that and talk about the Danny Johnson move. So Nick Gates, former offensive lineman for the New York Giants, was a pretty good starter until he broke his left fibula against and tibia in a game against the Commanders in 2021. I believe that was at FedEx Field in week two, I believe, Thursday Night Football. And seven surgeries on that leg, just a lot, a lot of pain there, similar to like Alex Smith, not near, like not as bad, obviously, but pretty, pretty bad. And the deal is a three-year deal worth up to 16.5, or no, worth $16.5 million with another $1.5 million in incentives for a total of 18 if everything works out. So probably not going to be three year 18 more like three years 16.5 and again i'll say this every video the first deal you see is the agent giving it to the you know the media members so it's going to look better it's going to look better than it actually is and that's with most of the deals but it's a little bit more than i thought for nick gates who again is coming off a major injury uh you know seven surgeries on that leg and i <laughs> These offensive line moves, I'm not saying they're bad. <laughs> they're just making me even more confused than I was before about who's starting in which spot. Because you sign Austin Wiley, who can play left guard, right guard, or right tackle. You have Sam Cosme, who can play right tackle, who is either going to play right tackle, right guard, or even left guard. And then you have Nick Gates, who can play left guard, center, or right guard, and even can play tackle. He's not going to play tackle for us, but he can play tackles. Well, very, very confusing for me in terms of who I think is going to start. If I had to guess, I would go Leno at left tackle. Maybe Nick Gates right now at left guard. Chase Roulier at center. Austin Wiley at right guard. And Sam Cosme at right tackle. I have no idea, honestly. Really, the only one I feel good about is Charles Leno right now. But that could change if they draft the guy. And, yeah, I'm just really, really, yeah, I have no idea right now. So Nick Gates plays center, plays a bunch of other positions, played in 10 games this past uh, season for the New York Giants. Let's see if they show the starts. They don't show the starts. I want to go ahead and show the starts for you guys. Just I just want to see how much he actually played this year for the Giants. And because, you know, it, it was a very major injury. It took him, you know, over a year to get back from that and understandably so so we'll just go right here but he's a you know feisty player you see some you know he gets into a lot of fights and some people will be like oh you know the Giants fans love him you know you should be really really excited about the deal this is why the Giants fans love him because he can't first off they liked him because you know he was you know you know he was really excited into the game you know he got into a lot of fights and stuff but and he stood up for his teammates but also he got you know he went through seven surgeries a major injury and came back like that's huge and that's why a lot of people new york giants fans were sad to see him go but if you really look into it, a lot of them didn't say he was that good but he started eight games this past year i think all over the o-line in 2021 was i guess a guard for them and in 2020 played center and i'm sure some other positions as well so he was pretty good in uh 2020 for them 2019 was his first season in the league and you know still relatively young i guess like 28 years old look at pff again you got to take pff with a grain of salt and even like sacks and stuff you got to take that with a grain of salt because sometimes it's more on the quarterback than they're truly showing they say he has one sack allowed four penalties in about 400 offensive snaps with a 60.3 pff grade so I, I don't know guys i really don't know we'll see he also he is 6'6 318 pounds played in nebraska 27 years old and what i also he came off a major injury so how he played last season he's probably gonna be a little bit better this year just because you know he's gonna have a full off season to get ready for this uh for the year i i, I know some people think he's gonna start and he might start 
I see this as a Wes Schweitzer type signing. So from 2020, I don't think that Wes Schweitzer will be back now that we signed Nick Gates and what, or not Wes Schweitzer, Nick Gates and Austin Wiley. So, or Andrew Wiley. I, 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 I know I keep saying Austin, Andrew Wiley. And I don't know why I keep saying Austin Wiley. Maybe there is an Austin Wiley, but Andrew Wiley. And I don't think we're going to sign Wes Schweitzer now. Nick Gates is a good depth piece to have, I believe. And he, he could start at some point. And if he's really fully healed from the injury and back to his 2019 to 2020 self, then I could see him starting at guard, maybe even center. I still would like to keep Chase. And I think this allows you to keep Chase just because, okay, it gives you an insurance policy. If Chase is just not fully back, then you can release, like if you see him in OTAs, and he's not truly back, then you can cut him after June 1st, and Nick Gates can be your center. But if he looks good, you can have him as your starting center, maybe restructure that deal a little bit, have Nick Gates as the backup center, and if Chase really goes down again, well, you have a good replacement, or not a great replacement, but an okay replacement in Nick Gates to replace you as a center. What I do not want the commanders to do (coughs) is re-sign Tyler Larson. I like Tyler Larson. He's a good guy, and he's a good player. But it does not make sense whatsoever to have your three centers be Chase Roulier, back-to-back years with season-ending leg injuries, Tyler Larson, back-to-back seasons with uh, season-ending uh, leg injuries, and then Nick Gates, who had a seven had seven surgeries on his leg. Does not make sense at all. It would be very, very stupid to do. Even if you think Nick Gates is going to be your guard and not center, I still think it would be idiotic to to do that I, I again i like larson i think he's a good backup but the combination of those three guys with the injuries they have i don't think it's a smart move i really do not think it is a smart move and you know first two years in the league was relatively i mean was healthy I mean, he was fully healthy 16 games in both uh seasons and that was a 16 game season and then got hurt in week two against the commanders and then Took a while to get back and came back middle of the season last year and played all those games. So good for him there. And I'm happy he got his money. So let's go into the Danny Johnson news. They re-signed Danny Johnson to a two-year deal worth up to $7 million with $2.7, uh, $2.75 million guaranteed. I like that they brought him back. I really uh, do. I think he was really solid for them down the stretch. And you know, if needed, can return kicks. I think... A little, I don't want to keep saying this. I think it's a little bit more than I thought Danny Johnson would get. And again, got to see what the deal actually is because it could be a lot of incentives and or it could be not much. I mean, we see the $2.75 million guaranteed. So if they wanted to move on from him, they wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be too much of a cap hit. And definitely after year one, it would be barely anything. But I like that they brought him in. It solidifies a little bit of cornerback depth, but they've got to at least add two more guys. I would add a veteran and then a rookie in the first two rounds for sure. So you still have a lot of ways to, uh, you know, a, a lot to go in that cornerback room. you got to improve it. And even O-line, they have to improve it. I mean, they added basically two depth pieces and Andrew Wiley, a guard who probably is an average guard, maybe even a little bit better. You know, the Super Bowl was very good. He played at right tackle, but maybe he plays that guard here. But they still got to improve it for sure. I mean, I think you got to add a tackle. And I still want a better guard than Andrew Wiley. Like, I I want a, like, the guard from the Philadelphia Eagles. I always mispronounce his name, but Isaac Simulu or whatever his name is. Sign him. Probably not going to because of the money. But I think they need to improve the offensive line still. But I like the Andrew Wiley. I, I, I think it's solid. And, you know, it helps the offensive line a little bit, but they still got a ways to go there. Same thing with the cornerback room. And But I think the Danny Johnson move is solid. You know, bring him back. Someone who knows the system. Ron Rivera likes him. He knows what to expect from Ron Rivera. And will be a solid fifth to sixth cornerback on the roster. Fifth to sixth cornerback on the roster. I'm happy he got his money because usually he's on the bubble in terms of making the roster or not. And what I last thing before I end the video sign a linebacker please it's been th- this is the fourth off season and and i know it's first day of free agents they have so much time but this is the fourth off season under Ron Rivera, the most expensive linebacker they've signed david mayo that is ridiculous sign a big name and some of them have been you know going off the market tj edwards uh pratt jermaine pratt 
uh, Tremaine Edmonds as well. Like, you know, some of those guys have been off the mark, but there's still a lot of good corners on the roster. So, or linebackers uh, on, you know, in free agency that they could sign. So we'll see what happens there. So that's it for today's video. Stay tuned for more and peace.